Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's spur video. Go ahead and have a look at the weather. Well, it's 10 to 14 days for today's spur video. Day 10 will take us to the 9th of September and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNGFS and ESL ensembles. Maybe run down a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSV2 at the end of the video for September itself. And I should get on that for you in a moment to save that first video of this day. It was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And we've also released, if that wasn't enough, uh, JMA from. Friday as well. So please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for Gav's weather vids. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, we're going to start off in the subtropical Atlantic. We've got two disturbance areas a yellow X just here, and another one just here. So uh, the first yellow X is disturbance one, has a 40% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days, and hot on its heels, we've got disturbance two with a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. So after a very quiet phase, it looks as though things might be starting to begin livening up a little bit in the uh, tropical and subtropical Atlantic. And obviously we'll keep you updated on that in the next few days. Central temperature is uh, now down to 17.1. That's 1.3 degrees. Um, above 61 to 99 average provisional to yesterday, the 29th of uh, the month. So I'm still not sure if it's going to hold in the 17s, actually, because it's quite a cold night last night where I am in North Anse. Anyway, I assume that's representative of the CT zone. No, I think when this updates tomorrow to take into account today's CT, that will drop down to 17.0. And it could be quite a chilly night again tonight, actually, through um, central parts of England, which might, in the end, pull this down to 16.9. So we might just avoid or, or miss out on a 17 Celsius CT uh, August. Will still be the warmest month of the summer though as June came in at 14.0 and July came in at 16.3 so it will still be the warmest month of the summer overall which of course is something that we highlighted in our summer forecast but we might just end up under 17 in the end. We'll be interested to see where that finishes up. And we'll know, I think, on Sunday. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're looking at London today. The red line is the third year upper air temperature average for London. So we're starting off about average at the moment. Uh, lift up in the upper air temperature taking place through the weekend into the beginning of next week. Then they fall back to be closer to uh, average before lifting up again, potentially later next week, and then hovering very close to the long-term 30-year average. Overall, looks a little bit above average for a temperature and a very warm start. But we do see much more in the way of precipitation now on these uh, graphs. So we're starting off relatively dry, of course, for the next couple of days. But from the beginning of next week, uh, almost through next week, actually looking quite unsettled. Actually quite a, quite a few precipitation spikes there, you know, from, uh, from from start to finish. So we're also going into a wetter phase for uh, the... Um, First week, 10 days of September anyway. And again, that's for London. So, it, you know, one of the dry places in the country. So definitely doesn't look like it's going to be overly hot. Does, doesn't look like it's going to be overly hot and dry to start September. Let's put it like that. Temperature normally is from the 30th of August, 7th of September, around to a little bit above average. Precipitation anomalies from the 30th of August, 7th of September. Still most air drier than average, but possibly starting to see this reverting closer to normal now. Oh, I think that could well be the trend over the next few days, but these anomaly maps gradually start turning uh, a little bit wetter. Latest wind map from Earth, nullschool.net, shows that we're under an area of high pressure though today. Nice ridge build up, built up from the Azores. I can turn into an area of high pressure and bring a lot of dry weather in the next day or two. But by next week, lower pressure will be back. And that takes us very nicely through to the uh, UK Bet Euro run for midnight on Monday with what looks like a fungi low starting to develop from both south and from the southwest. So by Tuesday, we're actually under an area of low pressure there. Big change on what models were forecasting a couple of days ago. Um, they're actually quite an unsettled start to next week, and maybe thundery too. That low gets out of the way for the middle part of next week, and another ridge builds up from the uh, Azores High. So the second half of next week, back to drier 
and got warmer weather again, although we have got a bit of a northeast wind in the south, which will bring, um, you know, some slightly cooler air into more southern parts of Gertie, but most areas looking warm and dry second half next week. I can't, again, show him at uh, Fundry Truck Garage, easing up from the south on Monday, and then we're under, like, a trough of low pressure Tuesday and Wednesday, and showers and or long spells rain, and then high pressure builds in, Built in, I should say, uh, from the uh, west and uh, from the Atlantic for the second half of next week. Although still with this thundery low down in the south. Heading up to the end of next week, got high pressure weight to the north and the northeast and also to the west. Low pressure to the south. So this brings a most unsettled, the risk of most unsettled weather anyway into southern parts of the country where the north gets the driest and the warmest weather. A little bit different on the pattern that we would typically expect. The KMA, uh, if I'm indeed getting this area of low pressure moving in from the south and southwest, that's a bit of a funky look about that, I reckon. And then we're under like the trough of low pressure through the early part of next week anyway, before high pressure gradually starts to re into the second half of next week, turning drier and warmer. And then up comes another funky low uh, later next week. And into next weekend. Um, and then beyond that, well, we look like we establishing an Atlantic flow, so gradually turning rather cooler and more showery there through the second week of September. That gets us to the 11th of September. The GFS midnight run, all much of a muchness for uh, Sunday. Trough of low pressure over the country. Well, Sunday to early, trough of low pressure gradually easing its way northwards as the high pressure. Um, got to sit away to the northeast. So the early part of next week looking rather showery. Then the high pressure establishes from the Atlantic turning mostly dry and warm. Second half of next week, Jeff is swinging back to a higher pressure scenario through uh, for next week again. You'll notice up to day 10, high pressure is in control, but gradually easing out into the Atlantic. But, you know, very much uh, the midnight GFS run is back to high pressure again. The chopping and changing that we've been seeing for a while, particularly for the GFS, has been absolutely insane over the past few days, and it really is hard to keep up with it all. <laughs> all of the twists and turns, to be honest. We end up looking like that, 15th of September, high pressure reaching from the Atlantic into the west of Europe. Meanwhile, the GFS 6Z, again, looks a little bit showery and fungy through the early part of next week. Then the high pressure builds in the Atlantic, bringing a lot of dry and warm weather with it. High pressure and gradually beginning to ease up towards Greenland and Iceland by around days 8, 9, 10, pulling wind into more of a northeasterly. It's starting to turn cooler, especially so for more eastern areas, but still a strong anti-cyclonic influence. So you remember yesterday, the GFS operations were very much towards low pressure. Today, they're back to high pressure, high pressure, high pressure. Um, we end up looking like that. Where this is going to end up <laughs> through next week uh, beyond it, you know, I'm scratching my head, but uh, definitely the GFS operationals, if not the ensembles, but the operational GFS um, runs the midnight and uh, six uh, they have gone back to high pressure big time again today. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to one for dear Matt. Drop a comment. Let's say what you think about this and all of our videos to content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Weather. Get them to subscribe too. It's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that for us. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, right, GM, what's that one doing? So, we've got some sort of fuzzy trough coming up from south on Sunday. Shallow trough over country Tuesday and Wednesday. That gets out of the way. Winds turning tomorrow of a northwesterly. High pressure out to the west of the country. And then, well, some sort of lows developing there across England and Wales around day 8, 9 and 10. So that would bring cooler and wetter weather, especially so to more southern and eastern parts of the country. There's high pressures away to the northwest. So that looks rather strange. And then we've got the ECM uh, again with low pressure from the south and west on Monday. So we're under low pressure through the Tuesday and Wednesday, um, looking rather unsettled. That gets out of the way through Thursday and Friday as high pressure takes over again. Winds back into the east, the low's gone down for this game. And then the lows start coming back up again, but ahead of it pulls up what looks like a very warm southerly or southeasterly flow. Before we gradually start to turn uh, more and settle, perhaps around days 9, 10. What are the upper air temperatures doing there uh, at uh, day uh, 8? So 192 hours, let's have a look. So very warm with the upper air temperature, blimey. So, uh, you know, that could lift the temperature to 30 degrees by around the 7th of September. Long way off with all the chopping and changing 
with him and model output. But uh, the uh, ECM has a has a hot and thundery look to it by uh, by the weekend of the seventh of the eighth of September. This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometrack.com. So a few heavy showers of us all gradually trundling their way up from the south overnight. Saturday into Sunday, actually, and uh, that could give you know some downpours through the weekend into next week. More widespread heavy rain, thunderstorms developing across central and eastern regions as well. Early next week, and then just case of showers, long spells of rain coming and going. Some very heavy showers or thunderstorms coming up from the south there around the 6th of September. And uh, more showers and thunderstorms possibly up to a day 10 gradually moving their way northwards. These are the options on the table in the ECM ensemble today for day 10, which of course gets us to the uh, 9th of September. These coming from ECMDays.int, by the way, uh, today. So uh, we've got 25 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north and northeast, low pressure to the south. That will bring the wettest weather into the southern part of the country. We have got 11 members of the uh, ECM ensembles down here, again, with high pressure to the uh, north and to the north things and to the northwest, low pressure to the south. Again, that will bring the wettest weather into the south. Should be quite warm with that southeasterly sort of flow. We have got uh, nine members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north and to the northeast, low pressure out in the Atlantic. That will bring up quite a warm southerly southeasterly. And then we've got six members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure in the middle of the North Atlantic. And that brings a rather cooler northwesterly flow. So a range of options and all down to the position and placement of the high pressure. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And it will get us to the 14th of September. 11 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north and to the northwest. Probably some sort of trough in the Norwegian Sea. And winds could well be coming in from the northwest direction with that. And then we've got 11, another 11 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure down here. Bringing a lot of dry and uh, fine weather in with it. There you go. So that will bring a lot of dry and warm weather there for the middle of September. And then meanwhile, we've got 10 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, low pressure through the north and the west of Europe. That's a much cooler and wetter scenario, obviously. We have got 10 members of the ECM ensembles as well, in two times low pressure coming in from the Atlantic, so that looks rather mixed and westerly. And finally, we have got nine members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, and with flat and westerly driest weather into the south, most unsettled, though, up in the north. Again, lots of options to go out there. And uh, and so we're going to see how it all works out. It's a very uncertain period. September is always an uncertain month. I say it's every year due to, like, um, hurricanes in the Atlantic, you know, and, and tropical storms, uh, uh, disturbance areas, how those develop, where they go, always difficult for the bottles to model those systems you know uh, um, a hurricane and whatnot and that always adds to the uncertainty so out of all of the months that we do the two most uncertain tend to be may and um, that's for a different reason that because the jet stream is always very slack and sluggish which again the, i don't think models handle all that well the weakness of the jet stream that you tend to get in May. So May is always quite a difficult month to forecast for, but the hardest month always seems to be September. Um, and that, as I said, down to like tropical developments a lot of the time anyway. But I don't think that accounts for like the recent uncertainty because we haven't had any tropical tropical developments for quite some time. So uh, the, the recent uncertainty for next week, you know, but we'll be seeing within the model output, that is a little bit strange and I'm not really sure what accounts for that, honestly. Right, well, finally, CFSB2, this is the latest 700 millibar height anomaly for uh, September. Remember, they change daily. But uh, the latest idea looks anticyclonic, uh, higher pressure above average heights dominating in the North Atlantic and into Northern Europe. That will bring the wind in to more of an easterly direction. The temperature anomaly is no better than average, so not a particularly warm September being indicated there, but a largely dry and average month, especially so for more northern and northwestern regions. 
we shall see how that plays out. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's so what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Weathers. Get them to subscribe too. Thank you so much for doing that. Around 25 to 30 subscribers will get to 18.7k. So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, right, so that's happening on the channel tomorrow. Going to have 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We will have the East Shepherd 42 day broadcast for the UK and Ireland. There'll be weekend forecast and a 10 to 14 day usual Saturday features. And then on Sunday, we've got 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And then it's the big one, the first winter 2024 25 update coming up on Sunday at 10 a.m. It's going to be an absolute epic. And I know so many of you are waiting to start the winter updates. Well, they get underway over the weekend. We'll be live on Sunday. I think I might be live streaming from half five to half half six this week because uh, I might be off to the cinema uh, to see um, Attack of Clones actually, episode two, Star Wars episode two, Attack of Clones which is having a rerun um, at Cineworld um, at Six Fields in Northampton on Sunday evening, a one-off showing so I'll probably uh, take myself off to that on Sunday evening which means the live stream on Sunday will probably be uh, half an hour earlier and ending half an hour earlier as well, so half five to half six. But I'll confirm that on the socials and whatnot over the weekend. Right, well, you have a fantastic uh, Friday. I shall see you tomorrow with our videos. But for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.